we all know that California has some challenging terrain, significantly more challenging terrain than here in the Midwest where I live. Um, and I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about preparing your bicycle um, for the journey. The one thing that I'm going to do, and I, and I suggest a lot of people do, is make sure they have an easy enough gear on the back. And this is called a cassette. And usually the cassettes range from 12 to 25. Um, I'm going to put a special 27 tooth cassette on the back of my bike because I know I'm going to need it as I go up these, these large hills. And I could probably get up the hill in my 25 relatively easy, but you know what? We have long days ahead of us. And I want to go up that hill with the least amount of muscular stress that I can. And that's oftentimes putting a 27 or using this top gear here and spinning up the hill and saving my muscles because I know I'm going to have to ride hard another day. The other thing is the front chain ring. Now a lot of front chain rings, which is this chain ring out here, come as a 53 and the middle one comes as a 39. I'm also going to change the front chain rings of my bike and to make it even easier in terms of the gearing. And I'm going to use what's called a compact front chain ring setup. And that's a 50 tooth front chain ring and a 34 internal chain ring. Again, making the entire equation significantly easier and allowing me to pedal at a lighter load when I go up these climbs. So a compact, my recommendation is a compact front chain ring a 27 rear cassette and your, and your mechanics will know that, but you also need to make sure that you're self-sufficient on the road. Even though we're going to have support at these rides, it's going to be important that you have a seat pack full of the necessary stuff because if they're supporting someone else or the truck is not right behind you, it's going to be important to have the gear necessary in your seat pack to be able to change your own flat. We're going to talk about that in another video, but ultimately you need these tools. You need a spare tube, and the key to a spare tube is make sure that the valve stem is long enough to poke through your rim. Um, back in the old days, the rims were always very, very shallow and there was only one length of valve stem. But now, with these 808s and 404s and carbon fiber and Bontrager 6.5 and head wheels, there's a huge part of the rim on it. So you have to make sure that the valve stem, which is the little thing that sticks out of the tube, is long enough to poke through and you can get your pump or your CO2 cartridge on there so you can give it air. This is normally what you use in the seat pack. You have some tire levers. Um, you also have a Allen wrench in case something comes loose, you need to tighten it up. Of course, you have your CO2s and your CO2 injector. These, are the, these, are, these elements right here have to be on everyone's person, whether it's in a seat pack like this or you stuff it in the back of your jersey because you need to change your flat. And if you don't know how to change a flat, that's bad, but it's not the end of the world. Someone on the ride or someone in your group probably does. Ask them for some help. Make sure you get some help and make sure you know how to put the CO2 into your tire. In the beginning when these things first came out, I tried and ruined about six or seven of them and I had my trusty frame pump with me almost all the time. But now they've gotten a lot simpler. Practice them, you'll be safe. Um, you'll be glad you had it in case uh, the truck's nowhere to be found.